All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let us uh, begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> God, we're grateful and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for this opportunity to come and to share in your word. We pray even now, Lord, that you open up our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive all that you have for us this evening. This is our prayer. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Um, so again, thank you, each and every one of you, for, for joining us tonight. We're appreciative of your presence. So last week, we concluded our discussion with uh, talking about how justice is tied to God. Um, you can't have one without the other. When we remove God from society, we invite chaos into our society. And as God has been, uh, um, and as God has been systematically removed from our society, uh, so has the entire notion of justice been removed from our society. So um, we define justice as being the equitable and impartial application of God's moral law. The equitable and impartial application of God's moral law. It ought to be our mission as the church to fulfill what Jesus declares his mission to be in Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 20. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendee, and sat down. And the Bible says that the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. So this is what he says that his mission is, and this is what the mission of the church ought to be. Proclaim good news to the poor. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. Set at liberty those who are oppressed. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of Jubilee, a year of universal release. He rolled up the scroll. He sat down because as it was in that time and in that culture, you stood to read the scripture and you sat down to teach and preach. So um, that, that, that may be why nowadays uh, people have in church they have you stand during the reading of the scripture. Um, but what they, what they didn't do or continue is the, the part where you actually sit down to do the teaching. You sit down to do the preaching. Um, and then the Bible says that all eyes were fixed on Jesus because they were awaiting the explanation that he would be giving regarding the passage of scripture that he had just read. Um, as we bring this particular study on embracing oneness to a conclusion. This week's discussion is on the purpose of the church and what this means for fighting the onslaught of evil. I'd like to open up today's discussion with this question. What do you think is the purpose of the church? What do you think is the purpose of the church? Is the church just another social club? Um, is the church a place to go out of tradition? Um, is there any significance to, to the church? And what should the church be doing? So my question, what do you think is the purpose of the church? Anybody, what do you think is the purpose? The purpose of the church is to spread the good news of Jesus. We should be, should be spreading the gospel to all people. So the purpose of the church is to spread the good news of Jesus, okay? Anything else or anybody else? The purpose of the church. Yeah. Yes, sir. I would say something similar. The purpose to, to, to learn about the word 
and 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 the, and the mission, and then to help understand how your part of the body of the church performs what you need to be performing to do what Brother Chisholm said to do. Okay. All right. Anybody else? What What do you believe is the purpose? of the church what should the church be doing so we we should be spreading the gospel is there anything else that the church should be doing that uh, should be doing what yeah. about a church the church as a body of unity yes um bringing people together and i also feel to me i feel the church is a place of comfort yeah place of comfort okay all right so I, I've heard one person say that the church is like a filling station. You come to the church to get filled up um, and you leave the church in order to let it all out to, to serve, um, to spread that gospel. Yes, I see Sister Myers has her hand raised. Can we uh, unmute her so that she could respond? Have the poor. To help the poor. Yeah, we just 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 shared that, right? To help the poor. Uh, anything else? Anything else? All right. Um, well, when trying to understand the purpose of the church, we should probably go back to the one who started the church in the first place. Um, so let's take a look, if you don't mind, at the gospel as recorded by Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, and uh, we're going to read verses 13 through 20. The gospel is recorded by Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. All right, Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? They said, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, um, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. That was Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Jesus was having this discourse with his disciples, right? He asked, um, so what are others saying about who I am? And y'all see how they responded. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So then he gets real specific. He then asked them, well, since you decided to follow me and you have now been with me, who do you say that I am? Um, then Peter speaks up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's when Jesus goes into who Peter was and the establishment of his church. Um, the question that, the reason why I asked uh, what's the purpose of the church and all of that is because there's a whole lot of people who've been in church for quite a number of years. A whole lot of people have been coming to a building or some building for a large number of years. So, so people have been coming to church for a number of years, going to a church for a number of years. And, and my question is, do people have uh, know the purpose for church? I mean, we haven't been in the building for a few months now. So, so does that mean that 
who and what we are is supposed to stop? Or does that mean that the church um, is beyond the building and the church is in what it is that we're supposed to be doing? Um, so, so that's the question. Now, I'm going to let Tony Evans kind of explain that a little bit and talk about it. And then we'll be able to kind of share a little bit more with it and, um, and, and discuss that. Um, I also wanted to share the New Testament pattern for the church as it's described in Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. So Acts, uh, the, uh, the Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. Because um, since the time that Jesus establishes the church in the first century, I'm not sure that the 21st century church continues to look the same and or function in the same way that the church did when it was first established. So I wanna share that a little bit. Um, and then I, I wanna uh, get into that video so that we can watch the video together. So Acts chapter two, verses 41 through 47. And they, talking about the believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellow, oh, actually this is verse 42, forgive me y'all, verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers and awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This New Testament church called for a prophetic voice, a voice that didn't just preach this prosperity stuff, a voice that didn't just preach and uh, did this feel good stuff. But this was an actual, a prophetic voice um, that spoke a pungent truth. You remember when Peter got up to speak that day, he wasn't sugarcoating it. He told the truth. Um, and he told that truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing that, that the church ought to be doing today. They ought to be speaking with a prophetic voice, um, a pungent truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. But then secondly, what we also see is that they had a program in place. They participated in a particular program, which was characterized by a combination of evangelism, instruction, worship, and fellowship. Evangelism, instruction, worship, and fellowship. So that first century church, y'all, they had prophetic preachers who told the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit, didn't care who didn't like it. And they participated in a program collectively that included evangelism, instruction, worship, and fellowship. Now, when I consider the mission of Jesus as outlined in Luke, the initiation of the church, as we shared in Matthew, and the implementation of the church, as we saw in Acts. And when I compare that to where we are in this 21st century church, it seems to me a little bit different. And, and I'm, I'm curious to know, is there anybody else other than me that sees some differences between what we've read about just a few moments ago in terms of this first church um, and how the church was established and where we are today. 
Uh, does anybody, does anybody other than me see some differences between that church and today's church? Yes, sir. Yeah, this, this is this is this is very intriguing because I, I don't see us doing this on a day by day basis. I mean, you know, I, what what what's the assignment to do, and how, and when do we do this? Other than when we, you know, we, we we worship together and instructions together, but are we out evangelizing and 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 fellowship fellowshipping elsewhere? Right. That and and that's the question and. Um, and it looks like somebody, uh, stated in the, in the chat that our job is to go out to bring souls to Christ. Actually, I want to, um, I want to, I want to share that our job is not necessarily to bring souls to Christ. Our job is to bring Christ to souls. So let me just, I just want to flip that. I want to flip that a little bit because I don't want us to get into the mindset that we're supposed to constantly be bringing people in because when we think of church and when we think of what we do, we constantly want to bring folks in. Oh, you need to come to church. But at, at the end of the day, what we've discovered during this pandemic is that we're not going to the building. So since we're not going to the building, we need to be bringing Christ who's within us all to people. Does that make sense? So we need to be bringing Christ to people as opposed to trying to bring people to Christ. Um, and, 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 and that, that there's just a little difference in that because I, I don't want us to ever get caught up in the fact that, Hey, if I can't get to the church, then I can't share Christ. No, you have Christ. So you have to bring the Christ in you to the people who are without Christ. You know what I mean? So that's why that, um, somebody shared, somebody shared, we ought to be, we ought to be going out. We, we, we ought to be sharing the gospel. We ought to be doing this. That, that is where we ought to be. And, and, and churches shouldn't feel stagnated because we're not in a building. Because if we were really doing what we were commissioned to do, then we would continue to be thriving even during this time because our job is to bring Christ to a dying world. I have a question about yes, about, about this, and and the con the context of my question is, a, a, another lesson says that we all are part of the body of the church, although we are different parts with different right. functions. Yes. So, I, I'm I'm just not getting a good handle on if we're doing different functions, but it sounds like we all should be doing the same thing. No, 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 no. So, so. We have, we all have a, a oneness in our goal. Our goal is one. Our functions shift. All right. The, that's just like, that's just like um, the, the message should not change. Methods change. All right. So, so, so as long as we are operating in one, we have one goal, but that doesn't necessarily make us. So for instance, we have, if our goal is to walk down the street, you need the hand to swing one way. You need the leg to move another way. You need the foot to cooperate with the leg. You need the elbow and the hand and the arm to cooperate with the hand. Um, our goal is to get down the street, but we all have a different function in order to get down the street. And we all have to work together to get towards our goal, which is to get down the street. So our goal um, and our oneness and purpose is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, is to, is to be light in darkness, is to be the ambassadors of Christ in a dying world is to help deal with racism and, and all of this other stuff in the world. Now, the, the manner in which you may go about it might be different for me because there may be some arenas that you are open to that, that you have access to that I do not. That's, that's how Paul operated. Now, let me, let me watch this, y'all, because Paul, 
Paul had dual citizenship. Paul was both a Jew and a Roman, or a Jew and a Gentile. He, he had dual citizenship. And as such, it afforded him opportunities to go in places that the rest of those disciples couldn't go in. And that's why God used Paul in the way that he used them to the Gentile world, because as, as, uh, as, as having dual citizenship, he, was, he had the opportunity to go places that some others weren't able to go. Now, the, the goal was the same to share Jesus Christ, but uh, where he went was different, how he got there was different, um, but the end goal was the same, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. I, I think that clarifies it because the example that I would use to, to, to show that is that maybe, maybe I might have access to the prison and the prison ministry and, and, and not to, 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 the, to the, the, the dance ministry or music ministry or people who are into other types of things, but the message should still be the same and how I, I, you do that might still be different than going in and dealing with the athletes, which is, which is a whole nother way that you'd have to operate. But the message is the same, but you're, you're, you're using what you've been given to do that. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so that, 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 that kind of clears it up, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And so, and so we all ought to be moving in this. That's, that's the difference from the very beginning of this, uh, of this Bible study of sameness and oneness. We don't have to be the same to be one. Um, and, and that's, that's what we need to really understand. We don't have to be the same to be one. Um, we need to be on, 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 a, on a cord in the same direction because our goal is the is the same but we don't have to be the same um in who we are when i when i share um when i share in counseling with uh with married couples or or potentially folks folks that want to get married i share with them all the time that when you get married you do not you're you don't come into the relationship 50 percent of the person and then you marry somebody else who makes up the other 50%, you are 100% who God made you to be. And you marry someone who is 100% whom God made them to be. And the two then can become one. But it's not like, um, oh, they make up the balance of me. No, they may compliment you. They may compliment you in ways that you, you know, that you really need them to, but you are 100% what God created. Um, the same, the same is is in this body. You know, um, I don't have to be half hand, half elbow to operate. I can be all hand and still do the work that God has me to do. And just like in somebody else could be all elbow and still do the work that God has for them to do. So, so again, um, it, there just seems to be a difference between how the church originated and where the church is now. Um, and, 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 and I'm sure that there are a lot of factors as a result of uh, a lot of things that, that cause it to be that way. But, but it just seems like there's a difference to, you know, um, there's a difference. All right. Did anybody else? Look? I saw yeah, another. In the chat, um, someone said we must love show love, look for ways to be loving. Absolutely. It's all about love. Um, it, it's, it's all about love. They know, or the world will know that you're my disciples by your love, not by the title that you possess in, in, in the hierarchy of, of the church, not in, um, not in your, the, the, the name, badge that you have, not in the, the particular uh, name of the church that you attend, but they know that you're a disciple by your love, mm -hmm. by love. And that's another thing. If we're all loving and showing love, the love of Christ, um, how we do that may be different. But that we do that is what makes us one. All right, all right. Any other uh, comments or concerns of, with regard to that? And if not, we're gonna go to the video. All right, let me see here. Share my screen. 
In August 2005, a lady named Katrina visited the city of New Orleans, and it wasn't a pretty visit. Hurricane force winds brought loss of life, loss of property. Futures were destroyed. The primary contributor to the damage was when the levees broke. The levees existed to hold back the damage that Katrina could do. But when they broke, the city was flooded and much of it destroyed. Lives forever shaken, devastated, not only because of a hurricane named Katrina, but because of failed levees. God has a levy in history called the church. The job of the church is to hold back the proliferation of evil so that the damage evil desires to do it's restricted from doing because the church's presence limits it. But when the levees break, when the church fails, when the damage that sin and evil and unrighteousness can do is devastating to individuals, to families, to whole societies. The issue today to salvage our culture, to reverse our direction, is the church. But it's unfortunate people have reduced the definition of church to uh, minutes of meeting on a weekly basis for a song and a sermon without fully understanding what the church is for and how the churches ought to function. That's why Matthew 16 is so important. We call it in hermeneutics, the art and science of biblical interpretation, the law of first mention. It's the first time the church is mentioned by Jesus Christ himself. And he lets us know a secret about the church, about the levies, and how they ought to work if we want to save and redeem the culture. Uh, he asked the question, who do men say that I am? And when he asked the question, who do men say that I am? They said, John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets. That was good, but that was wrong. Then he asked his clergy, but who do you? say that I am. The you is plural in the Greek, so if Jesus were texting, he'd be saying, who do y'all say the Son of Man is? That's when Peter sp speaks up. Peter, uh, a lot of times, wore peppermint socks. He loved to keep his foot in his mouth. On this occasion, though, he hit a bullseye. He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus commends him on his recognition, and then he introduces him to the church. He says in verse 18, I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He introduces, he introduces us to the word ecclesia, the word for church. He says, you're Peter. The Greek word is petros. It means a stone. But he says, I'm not going to build my program on a stone. You're, you're a good man, Peter. You're a great spokesperson. You've got a leadership type A personality. When it comes to what I'm doing in history, uh, I need more than a stone. I need a rock. I'll build my church upon the rock. The question is, what does the rock refer to? Well, in classical Greek, this word petra, rock, referred to individual stones that have been hewed together to form something bigger than any one stone could be on its own. Peter understood this concept because even when he wrote his epistle in 1 Peter chapter 2, speaking of the church, he says, you are all living stones come together to form one spiritual house. You see, the church is the coming together of individual stones unified to make something bigger. That's what Jesus meant. That's why he asked the disciples, not just Peter, who do y'all say the Son of Man is? The church is made up of individuals linked whose job it is to reflect and to legislate the values of the kingdom of God. He calls this church a legislative body. Because you see, the Greek word ecclesia means called out ones. It referred to citizens called out to be part of the Congress or the Parliament of Greek city states to legislate. 
You know the job of the church? Not just to have weekly services on Sunday, though maybe in the midweek, although that plays a part. It is to be God's legislative agency from heaven to history. Look at it like an embassy. America has embassies all around the world. An American embassy is really a little bit of America a long way from home. In a foreign country, in the American embassy, the laws of America rule, not the laws of the country in which it's located. Because embassy is a sovereign territory. They belong to the country they're from, not the country they're in. You get in trouble, you're overseas, you want to get beyond that gate because when you do, you're in America now. You know what the church is supposed to be? A little bit of heaven, a long way from home where the values of eternity are operative in the location of history. The problem today is that the church has become like the culture rather than representing the laws of the homeland. That's why you can have racial division in the church existing worse and longer than racial divisions in society. Because we're not legislating from heaven to earth, we're legislating from earth to the church. Uh, we might call that song backwards Christian soldiers. The unity of the church is critical to the progress of God's work in history. And that's why the church is made up of different cultures, different classes, different races, because God is seeking to unify his people so that these stones become a rock that cannot be stopped. Jesus said, I will build my church. Notice he's on the offense. He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hell is on the defense. The church shouldn't be spending its time stopping hell. God should be spending his time trying to stop the church because the church operating as this unified entity of stones becoming a rock has become very powerful. Let me ask you a question. How can we have all these churches on all these corners with all these preachers and all these members and all these programs and all these leaders and all these facilities and still have all this mess? There's a dead monkey on the line somewhere. The levees aren't holding. And one of the reasons the levees aren't holding is because we've missed the purpose of the church. You see, we've made the purpose of the church the church. The purpose of the church is not the church. The purpose of the church is the kingdom. That's why verse 19 of Matthew 16 says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Because the church exists to promote the kingdom, and the kingdom is the visible demonstration of the comprehensive rule of God over every area of life. There is nothing that sits outside of the kingdom. The church's job is to reflect that underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ. But because the church has become ingrown and lives for the church and therefore misses the kingdom, it hasn't utilized its keys. What are keys for? Well, Isaiah 22, 22 says, keys are to gain you access. You get in your house with keys. You get in your car with keys. You get in your office with keys. They gain you access. God says he's given the church the keys. It's the only group that's been given the keys, by the way, to access heaven's authority. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. You ever been in a hurry to go somewhere and not been able to find your keys? You're not going anywhere because you can't access anything. Well, maybe you're like me. You've got keys on your keychain and some of them you don't even know where they go to anymore. So they're useless keys. <laughs> Notice what the keys are for, to access another realm, the kingdom of heaven. God has given the church access to heaven so heaven can act on behalf of the church that's unified, cross-racially, cross-culturally, cross-class, to be this monster levy to keep Satan and hell, the gates of hell, from prevailing. Gates in the Old Testament was used of the place where the leaders would legislate from. It was where the laws were passed and the governance was provided. So the gates of hell is trying to govern what happens in history. God has built his church, given us his keys, so that for every hellish gate, there is a heavenly door to be opened by the church to post up the levees to hold back the enemy. But if the church exists for the church and doesn't understand and utilize the keys, then we won't have the impact. The levees will fall and the culture will fail. The racial divide will continue. Sunday morning at 11 o'clock will continue to be one of the most segregated hours in America. How do you know when the keys are being used by a unified church they're opening up the, date, the, the, the doors of heaven against the gates of hell. He says, whatever you bind on earth, verse 19 says, will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. To bind and to loose is to restrict or permit. It means God's going to back your play. He's going to let you share his authority in history. 
I remember one time when I was in New York, staying at a Marriott hotel. I checked out, caught a plane to go to Chicago where I checked into a Hilton hotel. I checked into a Hilton hotel, went up to my room on the 30th something floor, only to discover, click, click, red light, the door wouldn't open. Click, click, red light, the door wouldn't open. Click, click, red light, the door wouldn't open. Do you know how irritating it is to go 30 floors with luggage and the door not work, the key not work? So somewhat evangelically frustrated, I went back down and I asked the proprietor to, to, to give me another key. This key does not work. To which he said, sir, that key doesn't go to this hotel. I would use my Marriott key in a Hilton lock and that key doesn't open that door. <laughs> the church is using the wrong keys. And that's why the doors aren't opening and the society is flooding. We're using political keys and social keys and racial keys. Not kingdom keys. We're not getting kingdom authority. And in spite of the prayer meetings and the church meetings and the conferences and the books and the tapes and all the things we do, the authority is missing. Wrong keys. That lock won't work when you aren't using kingdom keys. When you are, heaven overrules. That's when you know that you're operating under divine authority. As you embrace oneness, or as we call the book, Oneness Embraced, our unity is critical, not only for ourselves, so that we can all get along. Our unity is critical for the salvation of a nation because God has only given the church access to him to overrule what the enemy is doing in society. It's time that we embrace one another and use the keys he's granted. All right. So let's hear what your thoughts are about what Dr. Evans just shared with us. We have to find the right key. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? We got to utilize the right keys. We, some of us may have been using the wrong keys, the political key, the you know, social key, um, and not, not, the, not the keys to the kingdom. Anybody else? What are your thoughts about what Dr. Evans just shared? What he said about the racial um, division. Yes. Um, I think I was watching one of the newscasts of all the rioting and stuff going on in New York when they had the ministers come in the last couple of weeks trying to do the unity. Yes. And that seems like something what he's saying too. Um, even though we're of the same race, we're still divided of what we want. And that's going to keep us divided until we come on that one accord. Yeah. And even though it's happening in New York, it's a lot going on even uh, locally. And one of the things that I think that is, being, is the worst part right now, and that's communication. Hmm. There's a lot of a lot of times it's miscommunication, but now we're not getting communication of, uh, you know, trying to um, bring folks together. And I want to back up a minute. And when you were um, saying before about how are we supposed to act, how, how, <clears throat> how should we be acting now? Yes. Even going out during these times when we do venture out, um, you should be still acting Christ-like, even if you only tell somebody that ha my, mine is a blessed day, <clears throat> to have a blessed day. And it, it, even if it's the cashier that you're cashing out through, have a blessed day, have a safe day, let them know that you're thinking about them just as much as you hope they're thinking about you as right. you go through this stuff. But there's a lot of division that I think is going on in the churches and in the world. And it's just a shame to say that it, it's not getting any better. And being in the house right now, um, you're trying to struggle and finding ways to get that, that uh, oneness back. 
And that's my thought. Amen. I, I'm with you on that too. Uh, there's so much disunity, even in the body of Christ, um, because people, people really have their own agendas and it's not a kingdom agenda. Um, it's not, it's not a God agenda. It's not an agenda where we could all move forward together. It's interesting because even sometimes in my discussions with pastors asking them, you know, how are you navigating this storm? You know, how are things going at the church? Um, you know, what, what are you doing to, to stay connected with your people? You know, and then when, when we're done with all of that, that conversation, then the next question is, is there anything that we can do to help? Because if, if we have something that's working, why would we not share it with our other brothers and sisters in Christ to, so, that, so that they can hear from us, this is what's working. It's working for us. It may not necessarily work for you, but this is what we have. But we're, we're, we're in such a competitive uh, world where even in the church, we, we're competing. And, I, keep, and I, I try to tell people all the time, I'm, listen, I'm not competing against you. I'm not running this race against you. You know, we're in this race together. And our goal is to, to reach the, uh, the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, um, so, so yeah, we, we, gotta, we gotta figure out this thing so that we can work together. And it, it all starts with having a kingdom mindset versus a church mindset where you just operate, you know, in the church for the church's sake, as opposed to this kingdom mindset where we are being a little bit of heaven here on earth and in history, like he said. I love, I love the way he, he said that and he used that analogy of the embassy um, and how the embassy, no matter where you go, the United States embassy is, a, is the United States, wherever it is. And that's where, that's what the kingdom, that's what we are supposed to be um, as, as children of God. We are supposed to be the kingdom um, of God and the kingdom of heaven um right here on earth so yes I, I i couldn't i couldn't agree with you more yes yes i like what he said about um the church um holding back one of the functions of the church is to hold back the proliferation of evil yes um and the other thing that caught my attention was he said the church is the legislative body um to basically from earth to heaven yes. um i loved when he said that and the other thing that stuck out in my mind was he said the levies aren't holding yeah. and we are misdefining what the church is supposed to be about which is what you just basically said but those three things um stuck out in my mind the levies aren't holding we aren't doing our job that's how i took it that's right. I mean, and it's, it's evident. It's evident that the levees aren't holding um, because there's so much chaos in this world. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we serve a God of order. You know, we, 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 we serve a God who does things decently and in order. And if we are supposed to be ambassadors of our God in this world, then we ought to be addressing and dealing with evil and, and different things in a different way. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I appreciate that. Um, somebody also shared that we do not give ourselves the freedom to profess our faith out loud. Uh, and maybe it's because of fear. And, and, um, and I know, I, I know that to be, to be true. It's amazing. It's amazing because, um, you know, there, there, there are some folks, if you go around, if you go around Muslims, they're gonna, assalamu alaikum. You know, whether you like it or not, that's their greeting of peace. And they but you know, some of us, we don't, we don't know, we don't want folks to know that we church folk, you know. So, so, so just like Sister Janice says, she talks about praise the Lord, you know, or, or have a blessed day, you know. Uh, so, some of us don't, don't even want to say, oh, well, have a good day. All right, bye bye, take care, you know, um, that association. And maybe it is out of fear that we're unwilling sometimes to live our faith out loud. Um, so yeah. Stephen has his hand up. Okay. Thank you. Who's that? It's me, Pastor. Hey. Steve. Oh, yes, sir. 
the other thing that I, I think is all, we also have to be made aware of that is that the building is not the church. It's, a, it's within us. And so I, I've heard this many years back is that for those people that don't go to church who refuse to go into a building, you might be the only church that they see. That's right. So it depends on how you carry yourself in a Christ-like manner so others can see that Christ does live in you because they, they're, they're visibly seeing it. That's right. That's right. And, and, and I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. And that's, and that's what, that's what we, we're, we're trying to share even during this time, that it's not the building, y'all. It's not the building. It's us. We are the church, the ecclesia, the called out. Um, and, and we are supposed to be the representatives, the ambassadors of what the church is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else? Um, I can't see hands right. Yes, sir. I see you, Brother Balkum. I can see you. Yeah. Go, going back to your question about um, what, what uh, Dr. Evans talking about something, it, it kind of hit me when he he referred to the levees were, were were breaking and they broke, and and I can I can see that I've been in situations where I might know what to do, go over there and fix that what needs to be done to go over there and fix the levee. So now I'm over there and I don't know how to fix the levee. I know that it needs to be fixed. I know that the church needs to do something, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. So, you, you know, it goes back, I guess, back to, 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 to what you said earlier when, when um, I think with, with, with the instructions. Absolutely. The, and, and instructions. So if, if you're going to have a task, Okay, we know that it's important to cut the grass, but I, I remember uh, a couple of years ago, maybe some of the guys remember we were out there doing the the, the cutting the, the the branches and everything, and and Trusty Mike got poison ivy because he didn't know what poison <laughs> ivy was. Right. So so again, that instruction is a key point to 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 translate transfer from what to do and how to do it. Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's key. Two, two, two uh, primary principles with respect to what it is that we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. One, prayer. You got to pray about it. Let God speak to us. Two, study. Study God's word. Because a lot of times with, with, with our prayer, what God will do is just confirm what is already in his word. Um, you know, he'll confirm that this is what we're supposed to do. This is how we're supposed to do it. That's why instruction is so important. That's why um, in that early church, day by day, um, instruction. They, they, they constantly were given instruction on, on who they are, what they're about, what, what we're supposed to be doing. And that, that, that has to be what we, what we do in this day. We, we have to, we gotta, we gotta get into God's word. We gotta study. And we gotta and we gotta allow the Lord to lead us into the into the ways we gotta go. And then here it is. Once we learn it, we gotta do it. We gotta stop breaking. We gotta uh, stop getting and huddling up. Um, George McCaleb in his book Breaking the Huddle talks about how in church everything is about a huddle. You know, when we come to the church in the morning, we huddle up. And, you know, in 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 the church we talking and all of this. Uh, during this during service, we sit with certain people. We huddle up. When church is over, we huddle up. We go in the parking lot, huddle up. Go out to eat, huddle up. And it's at what point do we break and do the job that we've been commissioned to do? You know. Um, so so again, we 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 got to have that that instruction. Um, we got to be prayerful, uh, and and we got to actually do the work that, that's been assigned to our hands. Absolutely. Sister Kimberly is uh, raising her hand. Yes. Uh, I I notice at work a lot of people do express to me, you know, how happy they are with God and how God is blessing them. I, I mean, I call people and tell them tell them that they're going to get a job and they they start crying on the phone and thanking God. So I'm finding especially in the last year or so, more people are talking to God, to me, than ever. Yeah. Just with ha even more than just have a blessed day or 
you know, just expressing what God has done for them, you know, right. during these times. Right. And, and isn't it a blessing? Watch this. Isn't it a blessing when people bring God to you? Because when people open up that door for you, then that just, that, that, it, see, it does. I, I know in our, in our workplaces and stuff, we're not really supposed to talk about God, but look, if somebody talked to me about God, that just opened up a door for me to go ahead and, and, and talk about, you know, the hope that I have. Amen. So, so thank God. So keep encouraging the people that way and, and watch this. And what you're doing is kingdom, kingdom building. You, you know what I mean? Some people think that something just something like that is minuscule. It's not. That's important to the kingdom. You know what I mean? They, they may they may have a conversation with you that they might not have with anybody else. And if that's the case, that is important to the kingdom. So mm -hmm. uh, again, as long as we, we all have the same goal in mind and we're moving as one, we don't have to be the same. You know, everybody is not a go out on the corner and talk to the people on the block. You know, that's not everybody's ministry, yeah. you know, um, but but everybody does have a, a testimony. Everybody does have a network of their own um, and can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody help me with, with these chats. OK, pray, study the word, implement the word. But it also must be ingrained in your heart. All right. The voice of the instructor may turn you off. Uh Oh, therefore, the giver must be someone that's acceptable. And you know what? And let me let me share this. Um, because in, in the church, you don't ever want to be in a place where you can't grow. You don't ever want to be in a place where you can't hear from God. If you are in a place or in a situation in a Bible study or anything where you feel like God cannot speak to you, then you may need to seek God and say, God, direct me to a place where I can hear you. Um, because like, like that, the, the, the voice of the instructor may turn you off. Okay, well, you know, it, it may not be the flavor of the, of the month. That, that, that might not be your flavor. Um, but, but we gotta be also, we gotta be mindful of the message that we're supposed to receive um, from, because watch this, God can use anybody that God wants to, to disseminate a message to you. So, so, so we gotta, we, we gotta, we gotta be open, open, open to receive what God has. And in the event that we are unable to at a particular place, um, at a particular function, then we say, Hey, look, God, is there a way that you can shift me um, so that I can, I can receive this thing in a different way. So, yeah. Pastor Wallace, about 25 years ago, I was at a, in a meeting mm -hmm. and there was a, a person up talking about how we could have a great life, the whole thing. And it was a white man. Mm -hmm. and I said to myself, I'm sitting there and I said, what can this white man tell me about having a great life? My mind. And a little voice said to me, stop looking at the messenger and listen to the message. Right. Yeah. That's, that's so important. So important. Some of, some of, uh, some of life's greatest lessons have probably come from the people that you, you wouldn't expect them to come from. That's one of the best things I've ever did <laughs> is I listen. I literally listen. Yeah. That's good. Life. That's good. So, uh, so, so Dr. Evans said a couple of things. We are, we're supposed to be a levy to hold back evil. We're supposed to promote the kingdom. Uh, we're supposed to come together as individuals, individual stones, um, and unify in order to give bigger levy. We are supposed to reflect and legislate the values of the kingdom of God, and we are supposed to be God's legislative agency from heaven to history. As the church, or as a church, or as the church, what are some things that we could be doing right now to help better represent Jesus and what it means to be a Christian as it relates to overcoming this division that's taking place? Right now, what could we be doing? One of the things I found is that when people know that you listen to them, they listen to you. So first is stepping back and saying, let me listen. Yes. Like really, don't listen just to what they're saying. 
but listen for what's behind it. Like really listen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. They, I think they call it active listening. Yes. Anyone else? What else? What could we be doing right now so that we could be better representatives for Jesus and what it means to be Christians as it relates to all of this division that's taking place? Pastor, I I just I'll go back to when you read out of from the book of Acts. Mm. I think when you were telling us when you read the part about the um how Jesus add to the to the membership. Yeah. And the people was taking care of each other. They uh they even went out and sold their possessions to take care of those that didn't have. Okay, and then they took the money according to the Bible and take care of the rest of them. When Jesus came up, they all was together praising, worshiping, and eating together. There wasn't anybody there hungry. So then those are the kind of things that the church is supposed to be doing to bring people together. If you start doing that, the word get out that the people there cares about the well-being of all those that are around them, then won't you want to be a part of that? Absolutely. And, and that's what Jesus wants us to do as Christians. That's what we're not doing today that 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 uh that they were doing back in the days in the church. The churches are not that kind of a church no more. Today's their church, we are too uh, I guess self-possessive of things that we don't want to part with to give it to you. I don't want to give it to you because mm -hmm. this is what I have, but it's more than what I need, rather yeah. than trying to share it with you. That's what that's what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Can you imagine? If, if the Lord required of us this day to give up our possessions and bring it all together and put it in one big pot and, and, and give to each person as they had need, please, people be leaving the church left and right. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I think one of the things that you can do, even on a daily or individual basis is whatever platform that you have where you communicate with folks, like for example, and I was just doing it and didn't even like realize that people were, I knew people were reading the post, but they, some people really look forward to the post. Um, on our class Facebook page, I would put up words of inspiration or scripture or something, or unfortunately we've been losing a lot of classmates and classmates have been, we're at the age where we're burying our parents, so on and so forth. And so I always say, don't so lost their mother. Let's offer up a prayer. Um, or and then the next day I might come back and say, I know we're in a pandemic, but do something to encourage yourself. You know, take a bubble bath, um, read a good book, um, read, listen to your favorite music. And uh, maybe for a couple of days, almost a week, I didn't do it because I got busy with other things. So I literally got messages with people saying, hey, darling, what's up? Um, you know, I miss your posts. Um, you don't know that really made my day or I, I was even having a rough day and yeah. that gave me some inspiration. So that's one way that we can do it. And the other thing is too, even in your um, daily attitude, um, like when I send my emails, I'll say something like, have a terrific Tuesday, blah, 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 blah. And you know, just doing it because that's what I always do. And I got an email today from the HR lady and she said, you know, I've never met you in person. She said, but when I get your emails, I am like, this is such a positive person. And she said, it makes me like feel good. And she said, so keep doing that. She said, because your the tone of your email comes out and I, I, I can't wait to meet you in person. So you never know just the little things that you do um, that you just don't even really think about how it could affect other people. and. Of course, when an opportunity presents itself, you know, you say something, they say something about God and you jump in, you know, bombard people with it. But just whatever platform that you have, you can utilize that platform in, in whatever small way. Yeah, that's good. that's good. Anybody else? Anybody else? What could we, we be doing right now? Let's have this Bible study be live. Everybody hop in there, ask any question. Don't care whether it sounds trivial but literally like just bring the bring it to us like like just suck on it suck on every word every bit of that video just to work walk away lit up all right all right i see sister butler has her hand raised 
Are we able to hear you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I fixed the sound. Before Thank you. We got started. Um, in this pandemic, there is, we, we find that we're confined to our homes. We are social people and we miss being social. So one of, one of the things that I started after I was going crazy here for the first <laughs> week was to reach out at, to at least three people every day. Mm. And they crossed every sector, race, religion, friends, people I hadn't heard from in years. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm getting calls and emails from long lost cousins <laughs> and some of our church members. This morning, I heard my phone ping and I got this lovely, lovely morning message from one of our church members. Excellent. And I, I think we forget the human touch that we're so used to. Yes. And we forget that we need to be human and reach out. I mean, that's the only thing that we can do. Say a kind word. How are you doing? Um, I've one of the church members that I ran in today is Naaman. He his birth. He's eighty nine years old today. Oh, today. Today is his birthday. He's oh, eighty nine wow. years old. He was just walking. I start my car and I said, "Hey, where you been?" He says, "Is church open?" <laughs> no, the building is closed, but the church is open. Oh, right. Yeah. So I think it's just getting in touch with people. Yes. Giving them a kind word, hearing a human voice. The one thing that I also got from Judy was an email today that asks in this pandemic, where is God? Mm. And it starts off as God is right where he's always been. That's right. So if anybody didn't get that, uh, it's not an email. It's a Facebook thing. I don't do Facebook very well but I'm going to try and share it with the rest of you. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else want to share? All right. Anyone else? All right. Well, if that's if that's all, thank and you so much for sharing with us in our pastor in the chat. It says July seventeenth, James and Dolores Dawson forty ninth wedding anniversary. Oh, what's today's date? I'm you know today's the fifteenth. Today is a blur to me. All right, well, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, James and Dolores Dawson for forty nine years. Mm. Forty nine years. years. Congratulations. That's Grace and I had 49 on July 3rd, so we're in the 49 club. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. 49, another 49. All right. 49ers. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that too. You sound like your team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his team. Uh -huh. uh, Sister Don't Wallace also the comments to share with you guys at the anniversary. Don't forget the Coleman 60 years they had on June 28th. Wow. Yeah. 60 years. 60. Deacon Coleman. Wow. Oh, I and this is Coleman, 60 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, God bless you all. God bless you. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> of Pastor? These days. Yes. Can I just ask? Um, there was a reference to the book of Luke, and I missed it. Do you know what that reference was? Luke chapter Tonight? 2. Luke chapter 2. Yes, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, uh, verses 16 through 20. Thank you. Dealt with uh, when Jesus picked up the scroll, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It says, yeah, that's the one I wanted. Yeah. Thank you. Myers. Yes, pastor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in review, when you started out early, you talked about the role of the church. Yes. I have three. but. Okay. I think it's more than three. I have evangelism, instruction, mm -hmm. and fellowship. What right. were the other ones? Uh, evangelism, instruction, worship, worship, worship and the fellowship. Industries. So it's only three? No, no. Evangelism, 
instruction, yes. worship. Worship and fellowship. And fellowship, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bless you, whoever sneezed. God bless you. Thank you. All right, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for sharing in this, uh, this embracing oneness uh, small group Bible study with uh, Dr. Tony Evans. And I pray that uh, each of us got something from it. Um, and we will we'll continue the conversation. I think the conversation needs to continue um, that, that we might begin to, or continue to, I'll say, um, become one. Just as Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And that is our goal, to, to be one with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ, and to be one with one another so that we might do the work that God has assigned each and every one of our hands to do. All right, we are in the hands of the deacons. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Father God, we come before your throne once again, thanking you for the opportunity. We thank you for the leadership that you have placed in our presence and how you have provided the needs that we needed. You have granted us with our prayer answering, uh, people that have been putting themselves on the prayer list. Uh, Sister Sutton, we continue to pray for her and her daughter that things go well with them. Yes. And Sister, our mother home, Sister Lisa Holmes, we ask that you touch her body tonight and continue to lift her up. You know what we all need of, Pastor, of Lord, and uh, just touch her right now, only you can. The Norris family, uh, Deacon Bethune, uncle, we ask that you pray for that family tonight, touch our family tonight with comfort letting them know that you have all power and that you are able to do what is needed to be done. And Father, we ask that you touch the Davidson family tonight and comfort them knowing that they have, Lord, have lifted the burden off of them, even though they have lost a loved one, mm -hmm. that he have taken them home to be with him. Uh, just bless them right now, Lord, and let them know, encourage their heart, that they'll know that they'll have all things in Christ Jesus. Bless Sister Vivian Townsend and her family as they lost loved one along the way. We just ask that you continue to lift that family up, Lord. They have gone through some crisis during this pandemic, and we just ask that you continue to let them know, even though they're going through the storm, that you are there to help them go through it. Bless them only as you can. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we ask that you touch all of those that have lost loved one along the way, those that are going through some kind of a downhearted, Burden tonight, Lord, we just ask that you have mercy upon them as only you can. Touch right now, Lord, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, because you say that if there's anything that is need of the S, then it shall be granted to you upon our wishes as, as you see fit. So give us understanding, even though we think that it's not coming, that day, the days will come when this burden will be over. And we just can't wait. We are waiting on you, Lord, to give us comfort, continue to strengthen us that we might be able to go through the storm and that when we come out, we will come out with pro gold. We just ask, Lord, that you touch us now in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Bless the church family as a whole. Keep us together, Lord, until we meet again as a whole in one building. But let us know, Lord, like the service we had tonight, continue to inspire them that the church is always with us and that we must be able to carry it out like, like you would have us to do. The word that we learn from day to day, don't let it be a loss or a topic that we've studied that we might be able to bear it in our heart and carry it in our mind. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us, and we pray that you enjoyed the message. If you are looking for a church home, come and worship with us during our Sunday morning service starting at 10 a.m. We are located at 2387 Morris Avenue in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And be sure to visit our website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org for more information. Here at the Dome, we enter to worship, leaving to serve.